Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021 at 6.42 p.m. via Google Meet. Uh, adjustments to the agenda. We have one adjustment. We would like to bring number 12 executive session um, right up and make that number six. Is that right, Jamie? Yes, that will come right after board comment. Right after board comment, we'll go into that and then come back to public session. Um, and there is a separate link that's been emailed out to the board so folks that are on can stay on from the public. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, uh, uh, so, so move to adjust. Remember, Dina gave me a uh, lesson on this last time. Uh, that we make that change uh, to change executive session to make it number six. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Justine. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Jenny. Good. All right. Good. Then assigned timekeeper. Amy, are you up for this again? I've got some times for you. I think... Um, uh, five consent agenda, five minutes or less, um, board comment. I don't have anything particular to say tonight, but uh, anybody else will give it five, um, reports to the board because we've got the expenditure and revenue report. I think for all reports to the board, let's give it, um, 15, probably to 20. That sounds optimistic. I know. Um, and then discussion items, COVID, let's give that 15. Uh, budget is going to be, let's give that at least 25. Audit, Tara, what do you think you need for the audit, 1920? Five minutes. Five, thank you. Stockridge decoupling vote and related dates timeline. We're going to look over the timeline that Lori, the um, town clerk at Stockbridge, um let's let's say 10 for that and experiential and outdoor education let's give that 15. uh no action items new hires public comment we'll be whatever time it is and then we have a final executive session okay does that sound good got all those amy good okay great let's get to it we have uh uh, approve the minutes of Tuesday, December 1st, 2020, regular. Uh, approve the minutes of tw Tuesday, January 5th, 2021, regular. Approve the minutes Tuesday, January 12th, 2021, special. Um, approve the minutes Thursday, January 14th, 2021, special. And approve the minutes of Monday, January 25th, 2021, special. Do we have any um, corrections? to these minutes. I do not. Okay, thank you. Amy? I do not. Jenny? I hope I don't since I wrote most of them. <laughs> I want you again, thank you so much for this. I know it's a lot of work and I appreciate it very much. We appreciate it. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve all minutes as a slate. Could somebody move that for me, please? I make a motion that we approve all minutes uh, as stated as a slate. Second. Thank you, Justine and Amy. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jenny? Aye. There? There you. Thank you. Good. We're done that. Okay, board comment. Is there any board comment? Amy? Yep, I uh, wanted to um, compliment uh, the administration and the teachers on their um, a monthly or weekly, I guess, newsletter that we receive as to um, you know, letting all the parents know what is actually happening in the classroom. I know it's something we had discussed um, 
uh, prior before and I just wanted to say thank you I, I, I think it's wonderful I think it's a great tool to to with parents I think that's great um, I also wanted to compliment our stapler I don't have an example of it in front of me but I love the new stapler because it's not real staples it is just getting the papers together and I think that's wonderful and very environmentally conscious so I, I appreciate that um, and my only other comment is to please um, we didn't receive the um, principal's report or the superintendent's report until um, 123 this afternoon so um, I would uh, appreciate as soon as we can get those um, it, it would be greatly appreciated we got Tara's report yesterday um, but it, in the packet it, it was sent out in in the uh, a packet uh, at 1:23 today, uh, with the um, with the uh, uh, link to the meeting tonight. I think we got it before, but I don't remember when we got it. Yeah, that was sent on Friday with the agenda, and Ray sent it again. But you always will get that with the agenda. Okay, well then, excuse me, I misspoke then. I will need to see how I missed that. That was definitely an error then on my part. So let me... I, uh, I, no, I just, I wanted to make certain we didn't miss a step here. So. Yeah, it was sent Friday at 5.37. Okay, uh, then excuse me, I will figure out what I did wrong. Thank you. Amy, you missed it because you were admiring the stapler. <laughs> okay. Good, Justine, board comment. No, thank you. Jenny, do you have board comment? I do not. Thank you. Okay, moving on. We're going to go into, uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss real estate purchase options. Somebody move that. I move to I make, make a motion. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I move to, um, go into executive session to discuss real estate options second second jenny all in favor signify by saying aye 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 aye, aye. so moved we'll see you back as soon as we're done make sure you're back in session and we have some action to take uh david Yes, uh, I, I suggest that the board uh, consider the following motion. Uh, move to find that the former Rochester High School building, plus or minus 4.44 acres of land and an associated access easement to Route 100 uh, are unnecessary for the continued operation of RSUD and its, ed and its educational programs and that RSUD should offer that property to the town of Rochester for $1 in accordance with Article 6C of the 2018 RSUD Articles of Agreement. I'm not sure if Ethan's talking, but he looks frozen on my screen. Uh, he does look frozen. I will make the motion that you just said. I have it in my notes. I'll second. I think we might need to we need Ethan back, yeah. Jeopardy is playing upstairs in my house. I can hear it in the back. <laughs> he just left, so he's probably going to log back mm -hmm. on. It's probably final Jeopardy at this time, too, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and we can do this over again if it's just for posterity. That's fine.
Are you back with us, Ethan? Ethan? Well, he just left again. So he must have some connection problems. And now oh, we just lost. Amy, too. Amy's yeah. Matt. <clears throat> um, should we move on to reports to the board and until he gets back? I mean, can we do a report to the board without a quorum? I know we cannot do a motion without a quorum. No, I prefer we wait. Okay. I don't know if the same thing's happening with them that happened to me, but I twice I've just gone black. My screen's just gone black. Nothing, nothing like meeting in a storm. We could actually meet because we don't have to travel, but on the other hand, technology may not allow us to. Well, I was going to suggest he just calls in. I just sent him the Cohen number, suggesting that. Jamie, did you try texting him to have him call in? Internet dropped. He's going to call in. Justine, so much for telling me, just come, me telling you, just come on. We'll try to get to business. That might be Ethan. Yep, I am here. I'm very sorry. Internet just died, and uh, I'm not at my. I'm usually down at my office, which has much better internet. It's just a snow day. Yeah, that's <laughs> my okay. Apologies. My so, apologies. Ethan, there was a uh, motion that I made. I can reread it. It's going to uh, have to be because we didn't have a quorum while I was not there. We didn't have okay. a quorum. 
So we have right. official meeting. Okay, so I will read. I will read the suggested motion for the board. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a motion to find that the former Rochester High School building, approximately 4.4 acres of land, and an associated access easement, uh, known hereafter as the property, are unnecessary for the continued operation of RSUD and its educational programs and that RSUD should offer the property to the town of Rochester for $1 in accordance with Article 6C of the 2018 RSUD Articles of Agreement. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to move that article. I have it down in the notes. Isn't there more to it? No, that was the motion. We can talk about the letter oh, okay. uh, separately, but that's the motion that we need to the prerequisite motion. So it's been second uh, moved. It needs to be seconded. I'll second. Justine seconded. Is there any discussion? It looks like Carl just joined. Oh, huh. okay. Um, there being no discussion, well, maybe no, but we're in the middle of what I'll wait because he should be should be part of this. Carl, are you there? I am. I just the internet gods have been, <laughs> at EC Fiber have deigned to reconnect me. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I'm I'm calling on the phone myself, so uh, um, I, I understand the problem. We've had had some delays tonight. Yeah. Um, well, EC we are in the middle. Um, no, um, they're down. I'm down on everything. I think, David, you need to, we're in the middle of a motion just coming out of executive session on the high school building. Okay. And David has proposed a motion um, that, um, and I think, David, you probably need to, re you need to read it again so that Carl can know it's been moved and seconded. Um, and we're in the discussion part, but if uh, he reads it again, then you'll call, be caught up to speed. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Carl, I think you've seen the language of this motion in an email, however, uh, the motion pending is that the former Rochester High School building, approximately 4.4 acres of land and an associated access easement uh, here and after known as the property are unnecessary for the continued operation of RSUD and its educational programs. And that RSUD should offer the property to the town of Rochester for $1 in accordance with Article 6C of the 2018 RSUD Articles of Agreement. Uh, Jenny has made the motion. Justine has seconded that motion, and we are discussing it. Do you have any discussion, Carl? Uh, that seems fairly clear. Um, I'm assuming that there was nothing uh, a, 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 a controversial or anything that, you know, the, the, the discussion was, was proper and, and appropriate in, in executive session, and obviously, you can't say anything. This is just what came out of executive session. But I'm I'm certainly not going to uh, try to reinvent the wheel or, or, or go through this. I, I'm I'm on board. Okay. Um, I would take a roll call vote here um, for this motion. Um, Amy. Aye. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Justine. Aye. Carl? Aye. Ethan? Aye. All right. Um, now, the second item we have is uh, a letter to be sent to the Rochester Select Board, um, which we discussed as well. And I think, Carl, have you, have, did you have a chance to read the, the draft of it that David sent out? Carl, are you there? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I am. I, I it would help if I unmute before I just say yes at my screen. Um, no, this this seems fine. Okay, that letter seems fine. Okay, um, do we need? How do we do this then, David? Do we? Uh... I, I don't see anything wrong with uh, making a motion to uh, sound the town the 
the offer letter for the Rochester uh, High School building, 4.4 acres of land uh, and an associated access easement uh, with uh, the, the deadline for the town to uh, accept the offer of Friday, February 19th at 5 p.m. with a proposed closing date of on or before June 30th, 2021. So moved. So moved, uh, Carl says, and uh, I know we've been getting in trouble for so moved, uh, but um, without being able to read it, um, I think we're going to accept that. Somebody uh, wants to second I that. Amend my, I can amend my motion to say that uh, I move that we uh, send the select board uh, the uh, letter as presented in David's email. Thank you. Is more clearer? Yes, thank you. Uh, do we have um, a second? I second. Justine seconds. I'll do, uh, is there any discussion? Yes, um, I'm concerned about the uh, time frame that we're asking the town. Um, that is all. Good, further discussion? Uh, I'll just chime in to say that the, uh, this is, the time period is, is exclusive for the town to accept the offer after that deadline. Uh, the town still has the right to accept the offer if it so chooses, but our side could also uh, market the property commercially at that point. Further discussion? Justine? No, thank you. Jenny? No, thank you. Carl? Um, yeah, I think that you know, I, I understand what Amy's saying and I hear her. Um, I think putting this out here doesn't mean that if the town said, hey, we, we want to, to, to put this at uh, our annual meeting, um, you know, we could extend our exclu exclusivity. I don't think that we're, we're locked into this for forever and ever, amen. Um, and, sub, you know, and, and as David points out, that even if we didn't extend, our, extend that window of exclusivity, um, you know, this, the, the, the town can still make an offer. So I think it's it's appropriate to you know to put it out there with that deadline and let them uh, uh, come back if they have issues. I should note further that the letter will be accompanied with a copy of the draft survey, just so it's clear exactly what the property will look like. So I have a question. Ethan, you're on mute. We're in the middle of a, um, a board board vote, so I'm afraid this isn't a time for questions right now, Pat. Okay. Um, yep. Uh, so we are in the middle of our discussion. Is there any further discussion? I'm going to go around one more time. Carl? I'm good. Justine? No, thank you. Jenny? I'm all set. Amy? No, I've said my piece. Okay. Um, I will take a roll call again for this. Um, Amy. Nay. Nay. Carl. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Justine. Aye. And Ethan, aye. The ayes have it. The letter is going to be submitted. All right, and that concludes our executive session. Oh, oh boy. Okay, well, that's the way. We're now on to reports to the board. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. 6.1 superintendent report. So you have my report. Uh, it came out to you on Friday. Um, I've enjoyed, I've been over in uh, our side quite a bit the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, Bonnie was out, so I was able to cover for her some time in the Rochester campus, which has been a delight. Um, and, uh, you know, the nice thing about our size uh, across the SU is it doesn't take long to get to really know the kids. So um, I've learned names pretty quickly, and I think that they recognize me pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, it's 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 been pretty great and fulfilling, as busy as things have been with COVID and stuff. When I'm in the buildings, it just feels terrific. So certainly fills my bucket as much as anything. And, um, 
I don't want to take much more time because we've got a pretty packed agenda still to go um, in regards to reviewing the, the budget draft, the third draft tonight, which is for discussion only and looking for further direction. And I'll take any questions folks have. Um, who has questions? Jenny, a question? I don't think so. Good. Justine? No, thanks. Carl? I'm good. Thank you, Jamie. Amy? No, thank you for the report. Thank you. Moving on to our business manager. Tara, welcome. Good evening, everyone. So I sent out my report. I believe it was the day before yesterday. They're kind of days of mixed together. Um, I'll take any questions that you have on the report. I did outline in the discussion items of my report the revenue and expenditure summaries. So if Ray, you want to put that up on the screen. Thank you. So on the revenue side, the items highlighted in orange are what I updated. The interest income, I updated from $4,000 to $4,348. And then down below, I have added the COVID reimbursement to offset the expenditure on the expenditure side of it. Ray, if you can go to the second page, please. So on the expenditure side, we did an update to the health insurance based on enrollment changes. So the over spending projection on the health insurance dropped from 50,195 to 47,195. So this I, is, Tara, this is a, you said this is overspending. This is above what we had budgeted for. Yes. For the current, this is current year that we're in, right? Yes. Okay. I increased the tech hardware savings from 10,000 to 12,000. And then I added in tech supply savings of $5,095. And those were the only changes that I made for this month. So if you go back to the first page, Ray, The projected deficit currently for 2021 is 137,801. The biggest portion of that deficit continues to be the shortfall in the tuition revenue received because of the students who chose to homeschool this year in comparison to where they were last year. Carl, you had a question? I did. Um, the uh, uh, the uh, labor contracts that, that, that we just ratified for this year, are those, uh, is that all squared away now so that we're showing our actual salaries that we're paying out this year, um, you know, in, inclusive of the uh, um, bump we had put in, uh, in, in anticipation of, of, of said uh, labor cost increases? We are completing the increases this week, uh, Carl, so I'll have more information at the end of this week for your next report. Thank you. Further questions for Tara? Jenny? Not on this front sheet, no. Justine? Nope, I'm good, thanks. Amy, you'll... We, you're good. You answered good question. Thank you. Okay, good. I think we're good on your report. Thank you, Tara. Uh, we'll move on to the principal's report. Maybe recognizing the time and the topics we still have to cover, Lindy and I could do the same thing and just take questions. If there, are there any specific questions on our report? 
I did not have any. Janet, uh, Jenny? Um, not for this month, but next month will we be seeing, or actually, no, it doesn't look like Star 360 will be done by the next meeting, or will it? It will be, Janet. Yeah. yeah, it will be. So we'll have yeah, some information on that. Yep, you'll get to see that data. There'll be an assessment report, Jenny, that we'll do to the board. Um, uh, Justine? Nope, I'm good, thanks. Carl? Jenny just asked my question, so I'm good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for your reports. All right, we're moving on to discussion items. 7.1 COVID-19 response. Thank you. Uh, we have um, Shane Oaks, and thank you, Shane, for your patience. I know we were hoping to get this. You thought this was going to be a lot sooner, but uh, um, welcome to our district. Thank you for having me. Uh, I have important business to attend to, so no worries. Um, I'm here, you know, to answer any questions that, that folks might have um, in, the, in our said community related to COVID-19, um, but I'll start by just talking a little bit about lessons learned um, from our situation in Stockbridge right before uh, the holiday break uh, and how that is going to inform some of our uh, thinking and actions as uh, as we move throughout this uh, the remainder of the school year. Um, first of all, folks know that we have changed our health screener um, to include um, an exclusion for people within a household if anybody in that household has been uh, determined uh, as needing to quarantine by the Department of Health or the state of Vermont. So. Uh, three situations where somebody would be asked to quarantine is if it was out-of-state leisure travel, uh, if they were sick uh, due to symptoms and their medical professional uh, determined that a COVID test was warranted, uh, you're in quarantine until, until those test results come back. Uh, and the third is if you've been identified as having been in direct contact uh, with a known COVID positive um, case. Uh, I think this is a really important step uh, for us to take as we know the cases, while they're coming down in Vermont, uh, we still see that it's very prevalent in our communities. Um, and with the amount of pre-symptomatic transmission and asymptomatic spread, um, we think that this is a really effective um, tool um, to just hold out our probably our most risky um, situations until we can be assured that uh, folks are gonna be able to come into our uh, buildings safely. Um, the, conversely, I think uh, what we found in, in Stockbridge um, is that once things um, get in play, it can take a while to really uh, wrap your hands around what's going on, where the contacts were, and um, how it may or may not be spreading. Um, and, and that has uh, you know, pretty, pretty profound impact. Um, so I think we'll be looking at least uh, shutting down for a period of, of seven days um, to give both the identification of those contacts and some time um, for uh, symptoms to start developing before we really consider um, whether or not we're ready to open up. Uh, we'll continue to make those uh, decisions in consultation with the health department, um, but we, can, we know that uh, it may take uh, even longer than a week um, to make sure that we've um, both contained everything and uh, have staffing levels that are adequate to um, support in-person learning. Uh, I'll say that the, the health screening doesn't just exclude students from coming into the buildings, it's impacting our staff as well across the district. Um, and so that, um, you know, that's certainly an important variable uh, that we need to consider when we're looking at our readiness to uh, resume in-person learning after um, a shutdown like that. So 
Uh, I think that's what Jamie asked me to come and talk about. And if folks have any questions, um, happy to field them. Jamie. Yeah, I was just, I wanted to add for folks and so they know that not all districts or supervisor unions have taken on the stance with the health check that we have in regards to asking folks to not come to in-person instruction if any member of their household is under quarantine, um, as Shane discussed. And so also just to clarify with folks, what Shane's referencing is, is if we had a positive case um, within the school community where someone was ruled to be contagious within the school community while we were open. That's where we would look to hit the pause button for probably up to seven days to just ensure that all contact tracing occurred and that we felt comfortable with staffing levels and comfortable that everyone was quarantined that should be um, before we would resume um, in-person learning. Originally, we thought we could take care of that type of work um, within a two or three days. Luckily. I mean, if there was any luck in regards to the RSED situation, it was that we had a large pause, right, over break, and we still decided that folks weren't ready to come back yet. Um, and so we took an additional week. So do, do know, I think what I want folks to hear is, is that we will take the time needed in the event that that was to occur. The positive news is we have had cases throughout our supervisory union, our towns, um, and we continue to mitigate the risk um, and that schools still do um, remain some of the safest places that we have in regards to spread of the virus um, when you're looking at the data points. Community spread is still the you know most significant factor of this virus um, and that our mitigation efforts do uh, make schools safer. Amy? I was wondering if we had a, a number, do we know how many students and how many of our district employees or SU employees who were working in Starkbridge uh, did end up contracting uh, COVID? Uh, I've said in previous meetings I, that I'm not going to disclose those numbers. Um, the state reports um, active cases within a school community, and so we're going to continue to utilize the metric that's uh, being used and reported on statewide uh, just for clarity as well as for uh, privacy stake for those families that um, you know, have gone through this. Okay, thank you. Further questions for Shane? Jenny? I do not have any questions. I know there was, I forget what the date of it was. There was a kind of a school community forum and I listened in, actually, I think it was the same night as one of our board meetings. So I think I was listening to both of them for a little while and I forget exactly where all of the um, panel was from, but I was impressed that, that those folks came, um, you know, to help out with the meeting. And I thought that that was, a really good opportunity for folks to listen to. Thanks for that feedback, Jenny. It uh, was a great opportunity to be able to speak with the community and to uh, show some of the working relationships we have with folks in both the health department, uh, lo local um, pediatricians, as well as members of the CDC uh, that we worked with throughout the, our response in Stockbridge. Um, and. I just also wanted to add that our community and families have been incredibly responsive, uh, transparent. Um, they are reaching out to make sure that everybody is following the guidelines, interpreting things correctly, and, and taking all the steps necessary to um, keep our schools open. Um, and that is allowing us to keep um, cases and, and uh, potentially uh, people who could be spreading the virus out of our school settings. So all those preventative uh, measures that we have in place are, are certainly helping us uh, to continue to stay open. Justine, do you have a question for Shane? No questions. Thank you for um, taking the time to be at our meeting and giving us all this guidance. And additionally, taking this on just to be this person I've been hearing um, Lindy has been singing your praises for m many months now. And uh, so I would much appreciate Really glad to see you um, and, and be able to thank you in person. Um, Carl, do you, do you have any questions for Shane? 
Uh, no, I just I'll, I'll piggyback on what you said. I was at the uh, uh, SCS Blood Drive. What was that? Two weekends ago, and the people, uh, you know, at least when I was in there, were all like, "This is, you know, we're doing a good." There, there was positive talk about how the community had responded and what was going on, and and uh, how the whole thing was was sugaring out. So. Thank you, you, you all for your effort, uh, the administration, the SU administration, and you. Oh, good. And I think we're all set. Thank you so much, Shane, for coming on and taking, giving us your time. Much appreciated. All right. Thank you all. Have a good evening. You too. All right. 7-2-21-22, budget third draft for discussion only. Jamie, you want to start with this? Yeah, um, Ray, do you want to put up the budget document that was shared in um, earlier when you there you go. So right now, the current proposal that you have, um, if you scroll down, Ray, I'm just going to give that that overview and then the principals are going to talk about the specifics in this proposal. And um, Tara will then walk the, the board through the tax sheet. Um, and actually, if you want to go all the way down to the bottom, the bottom line um, is only up um, about $22,000. I don't have the, the document right in front of me, but that is been Page driven. Five, what is it, Tara? Page five. Thank you. Right there. Yeah, 22,646, which is at 52%, uh, 0.52%, uh, percent, uh, so less than a percent. And we originally told you last month that we would come under 2%. We're in here at a 0.52%. Um, and out of that increase, um, Tara, was it 208,000? Um, 205,004. Yeah, you can tell it was up at uh, 450. 205,000 uh, yes. was driven of an increase in tuitions. So what that means is in order to get us down to where we're at, um, that required us to find efficiencies and savings, uh, both in buildings, uh, facilities, um, and in our pre-K through six staffing. Um, and I think that's an important thing for us to wrap our heads around. Yes, the budget is going up 0.52% or 22,000, but over $200,000 was seen as increases in tuitions at the middle and high school level. If you go down, Ray, the other thing I wanna bring to your attention is, is on the tax sheet, Ray, um, that due to the fact of decreased equalized pupils, uh, once again, is what we're you know what the current number is uh, is we lost about six per, pu per pupils, Tara. Yes, that's that correct. Sheet. Um, which is not great news, and the fact that we've been using uh, revenue in regards to your guys's um, surpluses that you've had, um, and so with um, the current you know offsetting uh, increase in expenses and the decrease in per pupils, um, it has increased your per pupil spending to with this current proposal at 19,296 and 14 cents. You do um, receive some exclusions due to your bond payments. Um, and what was the other piece, Tara? Those it's insurance uh, uh, or those yes. uh, uh, retirement contributions. That's yes, correct. it's what you pay in for the new teacher health assessment to the state teacher's retirement system. And then any special education excess cost that go over the threshold, your portion of that is also an exclusion that we can add to reduce the per pupil spending to get you below the threshold penalty which this current budget is. So I just have um, a question, Tara, um, looking at this, the um, adjusted per pupil spending calculation. So though we are not penalized for being above the threshold, we are still, we still have to base our tax rate off of that number, correct? That is correct. Okay. 
Yep, you're not penalized, but you still base your tax rate off of that. So as the principal has walked you through what this budget supports and what's been eliminated, one of the things we're gonna need tonight is a direction from the board about whether or not um, you're looking to get under the amount without your exclusions. I think that's a question that I wanna frame to you right now, um, because that's gonna be an important direction for us to, to look to head to. The other question that I know folks may have is that there is some more positive feedback coming out of Montpelier right now around the Ed Fund and how that may or may not impact the yield. Right now at a committee, it's showing that the yield could be po positively impacted even more um, than the amount that we're using tonight, which is the yield that we currently operate under. This tax sheet will be adjusted once that yield is approved by the legislature. The advice that I've received so far from the Agency of Education and um, that Tara and I have received from some other um, business managers is, is that this is a conservative approach. It's one that we know we feel really good about, um, that it won't change and go dip below this like originally forecasted. But I do, I do expect that that yield will be approved prior to you approving this budget. So know that the tax rates that you're seeing tonight should be impacted positively um, as we move forward. Because I, I do believe that, that yield amount should um, actually um, increase um, versus what was originally projected as a decreased yield. So that's Amy? positive news. Oh, Amy. Yeah, I uh, had asked Tara earlier today about this because I had seen um, information from the Ways and Means that they had uh, of this um, new yield that is a higher yield. So that is just proposed by a committee that then needs to be approved by the Agency of Ed. Is that what I'm hearing? No, that actually will go in front of the legislature. Okay, this was a legislative update that I was I was reading. So well, right, but that's just a committee of the legislature. Okay, that is a so it came out of committee. That's okay. what they're suggesting, but it has not received approval yet. Okay, I because if we are able, if if they do indeed accept that yield of eleven thousand three hundred eighty five dollars, which is above the ten thousand, that drops our tax rate by six cents. Our our uh, equalized uh, tax rate by six cents. It would definitely be positively. That would be positive. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I just didn't want to, I don't want to use a number like that and get our hopes up and then have to adjust yep. it back. I, I totally agree. agree. I just want to make sure that we are aware of that happening. I also am wondering how, um, uh, is there other tax, is that where the tax rate from the state comes in? You, there's been this talk of, of this 9% increase. That, in that is absolutely correct, Amy. Yep. Okay. That was all around the yield. That's all around the yield. Okay, thank you. It's yep. very complicated. So no, it's absolutely complicated. So yeah, I'm, that's why I wanted to kind of start the conversation there and kind of okay. give you those big picture things. As then now we start to get more into the details. Uh, Tara, can you also let the Listen. board know what the decrease in expenditures would need to be, or yep. increase revenue in order for us to get under that eighteen seven eight nine mark? without the exclusions. Based on using the current equalized pupil number of that 170.64, we would need to make an additional $86,600 cut or increase in surplus or revenue to get you down to 18,788.63. But we have those exclusions, so we, we are able to use them. Yes, the yeah. exclusions make it so you don't pay the double tax penalty. Okay, but by decreasing- but you still exclusion. have to pay taxes based on what your actual equalized per right. pupil cost is. So you're still basing your tax rates off that 19 to 96, 14. You're just not paying above and beyond that in your property tax rate. Right, okay. So, ex uh, sorry, explain that to me a bit more. Um, why why do we not just okay we have the exclusions we're under the penalty level leave it at that why why are there is there some concern about these exclusions and that jenny i i saw your hands up i'm sorry I'll, I'll i'll get to you right after that well it's philosophically whether or not you want to get under the excess spending threshold and be taxed at that rate 
because you're still being taxed at the 1929614. You're just not getting penalized a dollar on top of it. so without the excess spending threshold, you without those exclusions, Ethan, for every dollar you spend more than 18789, you would get taxed at another dollar. Yep. That's how the penalty works. So you're not getting that penalty, but you're still being taxed at 9296.14. Okay. Jenny? I uh, Two questions. The first one, Jamie, do we know what the timeline is for the yield number being approved? You know, there's a push to get this done because they understand some towns have delayed their votes and trying to get their budgets put to bed. So I've been hopeful based on the information I'm receiving that that's something they're going to take up very soon. And I know the governor addressed it again today in his address um, in regards to feeling better about um, the Ed Fund in general. So I, I think there's a real hope that this would be addressed prior to you adopting your budget. And then the second question, um, do we know what the, so the tax rate that's shown here, do we know what the difference would be if we were right at the 18789 versus the 19296. I'll definitely make certain you have that by the end of the night if Tara doesn't have that off the top of her head as the principals walk through the budget. The one nice thing about that yield, Jenny, is that um, if it does get approved, and again, I, I completely agree, we should not be banking on it until it happens by any means, but that does put our uh, equalized pupil tax rate a point is a, a half a cent more than last year. If the per pupil spending was 18,766.63, no other changes made, the Rochester tax rate would be an increase of 0 0.1240 and Stockbridge would be 0 .8, 0 0.0843. So it's about four cents. Carl. Um, thanks. Uh, Tara, when you look at page, uh, the, the, the first page of the revenue sheet, you show uh, that we're carrying over a, a, a surplus from uh, uh, the audit uh, that came in of 173,600. Is that, yes. is, is that the, is, is that a, a good figure? Are the auditors pretty, pretty comfortable with that? Or is that, that is a portion uh, of your projected surplus for the FY20 budget. They did provide me with a balance sheet, which we'll go over in detail when we talk about your the audit when we get to that point. But yes, that is based on the numbers that they provided to me and what we would need to use to get you under the threshold penalty. Okay. But there's further discussion we need to have around that as well. Okay, thank you. Further questions? I have questions on the detailed Jenny. budget. I'm not sure if we're going over right okay. now or if that's something we're going over later. So let's, no, let's no, move yeah. on. Yeah, let's move on um, from um, Jamie. I believe we're headed to the principals. Yeah, so um, in this budget, what it provides for us is um, we were able to expand some programming within the um, con confines of what we were trying to do financially. So um, some expanded programming opportunities looks like we will have some out someone specific for outdoor education a day a week in each um, campus, as well as um, we will be able to offer a foreign language multicultural uh, position. I don't know how to word that. We're still working on what that can look like. Um, as well. So we were able to expand some programming that we've been looking to do, do for a couple years now within this budget. Uh, also um, support our classroom teachers as well as some of our, um, you know, programming in terms of educational programming and mathematics um, with a focus on mathematics. And what else am I missing, Bonnie, that it's helping? Um, well, it main, it maintains our, our pre-K six program at both campuses that, that doesn't change. Um, I think you, I think you covered it all, Lindy, in, in terms of adjustments, in terms of adjustments that we, 
uh, simply had to make to bring in uh, to bring in the budget at the level that we did. Um, we've had to reduce uh, some positions, uh, the, primarily those being um, the receptionist position, the, the point five, the halftime receptionist position um, at the Rochester campus. Uh, we've also had to adjust downward by one day um, the uh, music program, uh, also the art program. Um, we are also reducing uh, an interventionist. We have a 0.8 interventionist position um, that is being reduced. And I think that covers that covers the basically the the reductions. Um, Did you cover we're also reducing one full-time FT um, paraprofessional in regular ed? Right. That's correct. Yeah. And and you felt you could do that without compromising our support. Well, we think, felt that we could, we felt that we could do it, Ethan. I I, I think yeah. what we would have to say is that all of these reductions, you know, are going to have some impact. That's just oh, no, that's, of course, of course. That's just the way it is. Um, do we think that we would leave children unsupported as a result of of the cut? No. And I think building wise, this budget does not support uh, keeping the heat on at 55 at the high school building and the electrical fee. Like those monies have been taken out of the budget. Right. So it does not yeah, support. This, yeah, this budget yeah. assumes that we will, We one of two things will happen. We will not, the RSUD will not own the building or the building will be shuttered so that we are not providing heat and electricity to it. At all, yeah. Pipes <laughs> would be completely drained. There's money in here to do that work and or move merchandise out, but RSUD would not operate that building. That building would be completely shuttered. And just so folks know, that's the equivalent of about a 0.5 FTE position. I think that's important for folks to know. I think I think it is I think it is safe to say that we have um, really really scrutinized uh, this budget, and um, what we're bringing what we're bringing you is really our uh, our best. Um, our best figuring on how we continue to operate a, uh, a, a good instructional program while dealing with the uh, financial realities that we're facing. What is two things, two major things that impact our budget in a negative way is the increase in um, tuitions that Jamie mentioned and the decrease in equalized pupils. Those two things put together had a significant impact um, on this budget. Amy. Uh, yes, looking over the um, notes on this budget draft, there was, um, a, I had a question about, it says tuition is based on projected enrollment from FY22 using FY22 announced rates plus one extra adding RWR, no, WRUD. What does that mean? Is that a... a we we put in one extra, extra student attending RUD, Ray River Unified District. We're, we're building in some cushion, Amy. A cushion. Okay. Is what we did. Yeah. In the event that student. someone moves in, so it's okay. not as much as I'd like to build, but based on where we're at financially, um, you know, I'd love to have a, a two, three, four kids built in. I just don't feel like we're at a place right now that we can do that. Okay. And the further review comment on that, Amy, is I'm going to work with Bonnie and Lindy to find out if we can get any information on our homeschool kiddos. Yep and what their intentions are going to be for the next fiscal year. Thank you. Two of the obvious frustrating points Jenny. of putting our budget together is that those two big drivers, tuition and decrease in equalized pupils, uh, are, are ones that we can't control really at this point in time in, in any significant way. Jenny, go ahead. Yeah, I actually, I have four questions. The first one kind of, sorry to backtrack a little bit, but Tara, what, um, 
what was the increase in the tax rate um, in what you have right now compared to last year? Rochester's uh, 0.1688, so 16 cents, almost 17. And uh, Stockbridge is about 13 cents, 12.98. And um, number two, I know we've talked about this in the past, and I don't remember. Um, you probably explained what the reason was, but for um, changing the transfer to food service, last year was 56,000 and now we don't have anything for that. I know there was a reason, but I can't remember what that was. So, yeah, so I, I can jump in there, Jenny. That is how we've been navigating it across the SU with the premise being that we are pushing hard to centralize food service. Um, so that would create a new fund within the, the SU, a new enterprise fund. And we would run food service from the SU trying to secure efficiencies. And after we ran it for a year, then we would see where we came out and then those we would bit we would budget moving forward and assess that out across the su and of course one of the things we have contemplated and there's been discussion at the su level as well is the potential um pursuit of a food service uh provider or contractor and that's something we got to discuss at the su level too great thank you um, number three, I was wondering if Bonnie or Lindy could summarize, it sounds like some of the um, positions have been, you kind of explained in terms of um, days, the art and the music teacher, and uh, I believe the receptionist, I was wondering if you could just summarize, summarize in terms of, of what, what the proposed FTE would be for each of those. Yeah. You mean the FTE that remains, Jenny, or the FTE that we reduced? Just the ones that have been changed, like art went from a you know one point zero to point eight, you know something like that. Okay. Uh, well, the receptionist position at um, at the Rochester campus, there were there was one point five. There was one and a half positions, and we're we're reducing the point five position. Um, music. Uh, went from 1.0, a full-time position, to uh, 0.8, which is a four-day-a-week four position. Um, the art position um, will now be uh, reduced by 0.2 by a day. Um, the para position uh, we're taking out fully, so the full 1.0 uh, para position is being reduced. And the interventionist at the Rochester campus, that's a 0.8 position. So uh, we have 1.8 interventionist at the Rochester campus. Now we will have one. Did that answer it, Jenny? Yes, but we, we there's still a number in there for para. So there's still one para. Yeah, in no, the we still have yes. regular ed paras in yep. the budget. We're just right. reducing one across the district. Right. Oh, okay. And then the last one, it's not a not a question, but um, a comment to Tara. I think that's a great idea about the homeschool, um, you know, reaching out to see what their plans are for last year. I think I did a quick, cal a quick calculation if we hadn't, you know, if we hadn't lost any equalized pupils, and obviously that will help, you know, help numbers in the future. And also, um, kind of talked about it before, but, you know, just kind of marketing to get kids from other towns and other families is always something that um, we've talked about, but we haven't really done. Amy. I just would, um, I was wondering if you could speak to the, the um, revenue carryover that just always baffles me that uh, in 19, we carried over $181,000. I mean, this is, we're here scrutinizing a budget, but in 19, we, we had $181,000 carried over in we had two hundred and thirty six thousand dollars in change carried over last year was one hundred and forty one. And this is a huge amount of money. How do we why did this happen? How going forward? You know, we have this one hundred and seventy three. We could have been using that in last year's budget. What, why is it like this? And um, I just don't understand. I just I see this big number and, and I'm saying, well, why aren't we just using that? 
Who's going to take that? Want to address that? Do you want me to go into the audit discussion now, or do you want to wait until we get there? Okay. Yeah, let's go into it. It's part of the audit discussion, okay. Amy. It's part of what you guys brought into the mergers, is my understanding. And, and Tara can talk to you about that. What I can tell you is, is that we're projecting the deficit this year. And I've had Tara analyze those numbers tightly. Okay. And we just missed on our pro projected incoming tuition. Right. And a big chunk of that was COVID. So it's not like we're projecting a big deal of savings in the expenses right now. Because I asked the same thing. I said, there's got to be something to miss. Right. Um, and the fact is, is that, you know, you've been using your surpluses up and offsetting revenue. Here's the issue we got. We're still projecting you to use 173.6 for next year. I need you to know that means we're going to have to find that money for the 22-23 budget. And I think what we're getting with this is I need you to know part of that means we have to start looking at doing business more efficient. Not watering down programming, but looking at doing business more efficient. And I think that that is going to be a big chunk of our work as we move forward. Yeah. Just to, I'm so, just going to say we've been that. Living off of those revenue dollars, you know, using that surplus as revenue. Right. It just, it's always been so much every year. And when you see that um, coming into the new budget, you're like, well, why didn't we scrimped and saved last year on our budget, but yet we had this extra. And I understand those, you know, business. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jamie, just for clarification, what's the SU budget increase projected? Yeah, do you want to go up to that, Ray? Uh, Tara, what page is that one on? Oh. So there's been, uh, if you remember in the SU, we didn't move um, the SU all technology to the SU. So there's a slight increase in that assessment. Uh, you see in fiscal services, it's going up 5,704 and six cents. Grant administration at the SU level though is going down 7,498. Nine and 94 cents. You can see that the tech admin has gone up, um, but part of that was us centralizing all tech. And where is special ed? You can see your special ed assessment has dropped as well by 9,828 and 26 cents. In general, Ethan, in most of our districts, between the drop in special ed um, and the changes to the grants, um, it's been about a wash. A wash. Do you have the exact difference? So the overall increase is about the same as last year, or what? I'm sorry. I guess I don't know what you mean by a wash. I, I mean that we decreased, your assessment went down in special ed and it went up in the SU assessment around fiscal services, um, technology, everyone else that works under my office, like curriculum, instruction and assessment, they, they offset each other. So as you can see here, like S, do you see what Ray's highlighting for you? Yeah, but so, so just because I'm a, this is not my strong subject, um, how does that do in terms of a difference between last year and this year? The difference budget. for your assessments was yep. $2,261.02. More this year? Yes. Okay. Good. Thank I knew you. it was about flat. I was looking for Tara to give me the exact number. Nope, that's enough. Sorry, I was saying goodnight to the kiddos at the same time. <laughs> I know that feeling very well. Thank you. We're at 28 minutes on budget. Okay. Um, are we ready to move on to Tara's part of this? Uh, 
Jenny, any further questions? Carl, any further questions? Um, I'm good. I, I do think that going from $173,000 uh, surplus to a uh, projected $137,000 or $173,000 surplus to $137,000 deficit is is something that we're going to have to uh, uh, sort out uh, between now and next budget cycle. Justine, I know you're about to head off. Would you like to make any comment before you leave? No, thank you. Um, I have, my questions had to do with uh, similar to what Amy was asking, and I might be able to stick on for a little bit longer to hear the answer. Okay. Good. Uh, let's move on. Um, so we're now talking to Tara. We're going to the audit. Are we done with the budget? I don't, I'm not sure exactly where we are in the process here. Tara, I wanted you just walk them through the tax sheet. So, Ray, if you want to put the tax sheet back up, please. So the way we work our way down through the tax sheet is we start with your budgeted expenditures of that $4,394,597. We reduce that by your offsetting revenue, which this year is an increase, and it comes out to $1,101,904. That gets you to your Act 68 education spending. So that number there is what drives what you get from the Ed Fund and what is used to determine your taxes and what they, the towns have to pay in for your taxes. So you take that number, you divide it by your equalized pupil of that 170 64. I got to update my sheet here, sorry. So that gets you the education spending per pupil cost of 19,296.14. We then reduce out your exclusions that we went over, which total $507.55. So you do not have to pay anything under that per pupil over cap line. So your adjusted per pupil spending maintains at that 19,296.14. You divide that by the yield, and that is what gives you your equalized residential tax rate of that 1.7545. We reduce out the merger incentive, which dropped two cents. It was four, and now it is two cents. So that gives you your preliminary equalized tax rate of 1.7345. The equalized non-residential rate, that is set by the tax department. So that is that 1.73. They give us that number in their December letter. And then we move from there to the individual towns. So the Rochester CLA was 109.89%. That dropped to 102.98% per the letter that we received from the state. So you take your equalized tax rate of that 1.7345 and you divide that by the individual town CLA. And that gives you the 22 homestead tax rate of 1.6843. So the, in, the decrease in the CLA increased the tax rate just under 11 cents. And we calculate that by taking what your FY21 homestead tax rate was on your tax bill per the tax department. You'll see that up there at that 1.5155. And you reduce that from what the new projection is and that gives you what your tax increase is. On the Stockbridge side, the CLA for the current year is 105.31%. That dropped to 101.36. So you're still over 100, which is good because otherwise it would be worse. But that gives you your FY22 homestead tax rate of 1.7112. You deduct that from what your tax rate was on the current bill per the tax department it was 1.5814 gives you an increase of 0.1298. The CLA had a 0.0641 increase on the tax rate. 
So that's how the tax sheet works. So obviously, as Jamie pointed out earlier, if the yield goes up, that's going to have a beneficial impact on the tax rates. If we have any changes to the equalized pupil, that'll have an impact on the tax rate. And if there's any additional adjustments made on the budget, that will ultimately impact the tax rate. Any questions on that? And just so you guys see on your tax sheet, about $18,800, $18, essentially, I'm rounding up, uh, adjust your tax rate by one cent. Tara, did I hear you correctly that the change in the CLA in Rochester, that just that change alone increased the tax rate 11 cents for or were you talking about the 11% that shows there? No, that's just the tax rate alone. The impact of the CLA dropping that much was 0 0.1059, so just under 11 cents, depending on how much rounding you do. And how much did that change it, would that change it in, in Stockbridge, just to kind of get a perspective, because the CLA is obviously something out of our control. Right, the Stockbridge CLA was a 0 0.0641 increase on the tax rate. Tara, um, I was looking at last year's um, estimated tax rate and CLA for Stockbridge in all of our documentation, and I noticed that um, it was projected when we, we did our budget, their CLA was um, noted to be at 100.70. So this, this obviously changed. When does the CLA change in towns? If Stockbridge went through a reappraisal, then that could have impacted it. As you see, I verified the numbers as to what they were on the tax department's website uh, as of January 31st to verify what numbers I was comparing against. So the CLA is driven by your grand list. It's driven by your listers in your town and your property values. So if it's however they file it and when they file it that there could be any impacts on what the CLA is. Further questions for Tara? Carl? I'm good, thank you. Just can I add something quick, Ethan? Mm -hmm. People might be saying, how did they increase revenue? One of the things we did, just so you know, is that I, I am utilizing Medicaid funds um, after a thorough dip into what we had in the SU, and I am providing full funding uh, via Medicaid for your nurse. Okay. And that was to just try to offset um, the impact of the equalized pupils, of course. So you were saying you want some direction from us tonight um, to get under this uh, excess spending threshold, I believe, correct? And how yeah, I mean, I'm looking for direction both on whether or not uh, the board's looking for us to get under that 18789 mark, and Tara told you what that would take, and or whether the board's interested in us looking at how can we look to decrease the budget to a point uh, where they're more comfortable around the tax rate. Um. I, I think, I mean, some of this discussion can happen in public. I mean, obviously, we, hmm, I don't know. What's your, what's your pleasure, board, um, as far as how we want to talk about this? Do we, do we want to put this off to a special meeting? Do we want to talk about it tonight? Amy, what do you think? Some big numbers we have to come up with. There's some big numbers, but there's a lot of things that are out of our control that have created our tax rate, such as the town CLA. That is completely out of our control, and that has has changed, as Tara said, 11 cents on our tax rate. Um, you know, the yield we don't know about yet, um, that's out of our control as well. Mm -hmm. um, is it is it worth waiting a little longer in some ways? I mean, luckily, we... we we're, we're, we're in May, so, you know, things could change by then, but I think we're, we're talking tight ship. Yeah, and to be able to, um, I mean, 
we're, we're we're just cutting more and more programming um, at this point. And um, I do understand that that we do need to start the conversation for the next year, probably immediately. That we're going to need to make some pretty big changes. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, in terms of restructure, is this? Is this, I mean, I know it's hard when we have, you know, not a full board with us, but um, uh, how do we want to go about these discussions? I mean, this is all the things that have been mentioned before and, you know, that are the boogie, boogie people that have become up to us about changing around classroom coordinations between campuses. I mean, I don't know. And, and it's all about whether this saves us money and increases educational opportunities. Um, um, and so I, I don't feel like I'm an expert on what decisions to be making about that um, in terms of where we should be going. I guess I would like some guidance um, of, 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 of how to be looking at this. Jamie? So even my, my experience, just having done some of this work around restructuring in FBUD, um, was that we did look to appoint a committee of the board and the purposes of the committee was to increase educational opportunities for students while also ensuring that it found efficiency. And that was their charge. And we brought in um, a consultant to help us do that work. And the consultant worked with the administration um, and members of the community with teachers and administration to develop um, a few different proposals there was public forums on it. Um, eventually that committee made a recommendation to the board and then the board approved um, the proposal. And that worked well and engaged the community in the conversation throughout um, and engaged really all stakeholders. And I think that that's an important thing for the board to take into account as we talk about um, maybe some larger scale changes. Well, um, we, we didn't do very well with the committee last time, um, last meeting. Um, but I'm, um, I, I, I mean, this is essential. This is essential work. Um, I'm already on the AOA committee. What's, what's, what's your call? J Jenny, yeah, speak up. Well, I feel like before we talk about any sort of reprogramming, we're gonna be sending the letter to a to the town of Rochester asking about the building, the operation of buildings, we have $285,000 in there. I feel like we need, um, I feel like it would be good to have a better sense of going, what's going on with that before we talk about anything major. Okay. So let things settle a little bit more before we do any formal discussions about next year. Well, I mean, I don't want to keep putting it down the line, but, no, but I, um, it just seems like I mean, that's a big number there, 285,000. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, it's not gonna go to zero, but. I think that we're quite late in the season to look at full restructuring. Well, what, no, I, I, what I would say is this year. is not for an entire another whole year. Yeah. Right. Okay. This, is, this is preparing us for what's coming. I mean, there may there may be some stuff going on this year that we still have to do and we have to decide do we want it do we want it lower do we right. want it still lower um that's a that's a big decision we i think we need to make tonight to tell to tell our administrator and our administration right yeah, keep going and and until until we say ouch i think that's that's when it's there well, I, I i saw this tonight and i didn't say ouch yet um but i think that's what we need to ask our administration for is um Push, push us to ouch, and then we'll know. In some ways, uh, Carl. What do you mean by ouch. Well, I mean, like, how many cuts they're going to make? Uh, um, to well, get where are you trying to go? Is my question. I, I guess. I mean, are we trying to reduce the tax rate by more? Uh, and uh, if we got, if we reduced eighty-six thousand uh, dollars to get under the threshold, what would that do to the tax rate? I mean, how many cents are we talking about? I, I agree. I mean, I, I, I I'm, I'm whatever your will is. I, it doesn't bother me personally. 
I mean, it's the threshold. Um, already it, it'd be a right around five cents, Amy. It's about right, right. So 18, eight. five cents. Yeah. That's, that's Carl. quite a bit. Carl? Um, I think that um, it's important that we get a we 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 get a, a roadmap of what reducing a, a, a down a, you know the the eighty five thousand dollars might even look like um, and 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 you know tied to a I, I mean I get that it's going to be about a nickel um, that gets Stockbridge that gets Stockbridge uh, down under a, a you know in, into a into a single single digit uh, a tax rate increase and it gets Rochester closer to ten cents. Um, you know, I, I, I think knowing what that looks like is going to, going to allow us to make a, to, 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 to make a better decision, you know? And I mean, I think the biggest thing I would just say about that is that it's the other, the other uh, angle that I'm concerned about is the whole, is it one-time cuts, um, where we're saying, okay, well, we're just going to, you know, we'll, we'll put off buying more books or we'll defer, this particular piece of maintenance or something, or are we going to, you know, are we looking at is the rec recommendation, you know, systemic programming cuts where they say, okay, we're going to um, combine grades somewhere, or we're going to only ha offer after school at one place, or, you know, I, I'm not trying to say that those are things I think we should do necessarily, but I think that understanding, you know, as they try to cut us down to, to that level, understanding whether these are, Long term, you know, we're never going to have um, bus service again. Kind of cuts, or whether we can just skimp for a year and uh, and and help us now. Those Let's are the to Bonnie, Bonnie first, and then Jamie. Bonnie, um, just just to respond to Carl's question, these cuts that we've made um, in our thinking, they are long term. I think we're beyond the point where we're looking at can we skimp by for a year. Um, we have slowly been doing that ever since I've been here, and I, we're really at the point where, um, where the next level of cuts, I think, are, would be more like program cuts. Because one of the things you never want to do with the budget is you never want to reduce every single component of the budget beyond what it needs to operate, because then nothing in your school operates well. Everything is everything is reduced beyond what it needs. To, uh, to operate efficiently. So I think I think we certainly can look for this money that you're suggesting, but it is going to probably be in programs and services. Expected, but it's good to know the picture or know the lay of the land and, and be able to make a, uh, a, a clear decision on facts. Jamie, did you have something to add to that? Yeah, I was just going to say that we're at a point where we're definitely, we're looking at... Um, personnel and programming at this point. Um, and, you know, it's essentially a little over 1.0 FT that we, we'd be looking to secure. Amy? So um, in our original um, merger uh, documents, the projected uh, tax for FY22 uh, is $1.81. And that was a pr projected. If we merged, that was what we projected we we would be at. Um, I had something else, but it has eluded me now. Can you What's, say that? Can you say that again, Amy? My daughter had just come in the room for a second. I didn't hear you. Yeah, sure, no problem. So what I was just commenting that in the um in the articles of agreement in our original merger documentation. We there was projections of what our um, tax rate would be in different scenarios. If we didn't merge, if we did merge, if the state made us merge, and um, for uh, FY um, and excuse me, we're actually in FY 22 now. Um, what we had projected at that time was we would be at a dollar ninety. So. What's what's the point? What's follow up? So the, so what? I just just in other words, we're under it. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. So that what's what's the problem? Right. I I I, you I, I tend to agree with you personally. I mean, I I I, I, I not that I don't think we have to do some really serious rethinking, but I I don't see a problem with that. 
Well, I agree, I guess is That's what I'm right. saying. And I, I don't think five, you know, trying to reduce down our programming and our education for our kids just for five cents. Oops. Oh, shoot. We lost her, which means we lost our quorum. So we have to wait till she comes back. Uh, I'll be. I do need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Sorry. You can leave. Hey, Amy, he just skipped out for a minute. He oh, should be right sorry. Gonna, yeah. Um... Squeeze a little harder. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I okay, think well... it's a, I think it's a really valid point because uh, it's about what we're going to. In other words, is this good enough? I think is it this... is good enough for now. And I do think we do have some heavy lifting and hard work to do uh, for the the next budget cycle and for what we're going to do into the future. I, I think we've squeezed out as much as we can without the, and still are able to provide our kids kiddos with programming that we feel that and want them to have. I um, It's about, we need them to have a good education and we need to give them the, the resources that they need to, to get that. I think Amy, your point about a dollar 90 is, is one that we need to make public, you know, when we present this. That, that this is the projection and this is where we are. So in some ways, because that, that I didn't I didn't remember that. I'm so glad you brought it up. Um, Carl, do you feel okay with that then? That, or do you feel we need further instructions with them? Um, yeah, I mean, I was interested. I, I, I'm not interested in, in looking at, you know, that 85,000. You know, I, I'm perfectly fine if we are not paying penalty. We have always said that we will not, you know, and the, 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 the message in Stockbridge has been around going into the penalty, and we have not. So I'm, 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 I'm perfectly fine with, with that. I don't feel like we're, I mean, I think last year we did the same thing. We were perfectly good with presenting a budget that was technically, you know, over the, the, the uh, uh, maximum tuition, but because of the offsets we were under, we avoided the penalty again. I think our, our so, I mean, I, I'm okay with that. I just think speaking to Jamie's question uh, or, or, or Jamie's uh, uh, ask of us, I, I personally think, you know, I think it'd be worth, you know, not that I want to cut programming, my, <laughs> the programming in Stockbridge got my kids into college. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with what our little schools do, but I think that it might be a good, you know, a, a good document at the very least to have ready when someone says, well, why are my taxes gone up so much? And we can say, well, would you like us not to have, you know, any kind of art or any kind of after school program? I think understanding what that would look like might be a good piece of paper to be able to defend where we're at more so than let's try to, let's try to squeeze more till, you know, till we get to all the, all our, cuts. that's what, that's, that's what I've been having that, that work done. That's what I meant by ouch, Amy, is a, I, I sort of want an ouch document, a document that just, you know, gets it down to boilerplate and we go, no, that's too much. And it's just instinctive. We say, no, that's too much. Cause you know, we're like, we, we nick, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there. And at what point do we say no? And maybe that's what Carl's looking for is that sort of document. Um, yeah, Jenny, you were looking for an ouch, a budget to approve. You were looking for No, I, I don't want to approve an ouch budget, today. but I'd like to be able to show one. Okay. You know, to I did think people, yeah, that's what Carl's like saying. So uh, we will definitely, uh, what I'm hearing is come up with what would be, what would be the additional cuts in order to get us under the threshold. Just, um, just, I do think it's important, though, for the board to hear is that the principals have reduced quite a bit. No, yeah, yeah I think no, no, it's I, probably the biggest chunk of staffing you've reduced in quite some time. This is this is not about um, um, I, I, I'm getting a consensus, Carl, Amy, and I'm about to ask Jenny that I think the four of us feel like we're OK where we are, but. Let's look. Let's let's have the answer for somebody who says, why aren't we there? You know what I mean? Let's have the answer for that. So it's not about, you know, so it's not that you don't take this seriously. You do. You take it seriously. But we want we want to be able to say, listen, this is this is what it, that would cost in this. No art in this. No this in this. OK, uh, Jenny, is that do you, do you, will you go along with that or how do you feel? Yeah, yeah, I agree with everything that um, you and Carl have been talking about. I think your ouch document and what he or look, what Carl's looking for, I think those are in line with each other. Great. And I really appreciate, again, Amy, I really appreciate you giving us the perspective of, of, of the projected um, tax rates 
Because I think that that makes such a difference. You know, that makes such a difference to be like, let's be real. Yeah. Um, I did have, I remembered my other question and I Great. was just wondering, um, you know, how, are, how is our tax rate comparable to other school tax rates, um, either within RSU or around the state? I mean, are we totally out of whack? Are we way over, way under, right, right in where everybody else is? I mean, sometimes looking, taking a step back and seeing how we all fit in um, is nice to know. So Amy, we can definitely give you that document too for next meeting. Yep. I mean, part of what impacts it, don't forget too, is where other towns are at in regards to their um, student in regards to when they've recently assessed and how that's impacted their economy. I know there's so many variables. But I can give you one example of a district that we have that has the same structure that you do. So they're a pre-K through six district. Prior to their CLA being applied, they are at a residential tax rate of 1.6679. Okay. Thank you. That's the only other one I have in RSU that's comparative to your structure. Okay. Good. So Thank I think you. we're all, are we, uh, do we, I don't know, think we need to make a motion or anything. I think we've given you the instruction. Jenny, Carl, Amy, I, we agree. Let's see the ouch, but we're actually okay with where we are now. Is that, Jenny, is that a thumbs up from you? Yes, thumbs up. Great, thank you. Thank you, good. Thank you very much to our administration for your very hard work on this. All of, the, all of you, much appreciated. Um, this is tough. I know this is, I, I can't imagine what these meetings must be like. When you sit there and you go, oh, no, oh, ah, uh, yeah, so. Very good, thank you. Let's move on um, to the uh, 7.3 1920 audit. And I am gonna step off for a sec, Amy. Oh, I can't step off because it's, can I just go to the bathroom, please? <laughs> we don't have a form if I, thank you. I'll be right back. That's the way you don't ask, you just go. Maybe get the relevant relevant documents queued up. Uh, Ray slash Tara slash whoever. I mean, <laughs> I, I was my first uh, instinct was to start singing the Jeopardy theme, but I think that's probably a little bit rude. <sighs> Courtney is always telling me to schedule in breaks in these meetings because they always seem to be going three hours. And I think we're going to, yeah, we're going to do three hours tonight easily. Hey, hey, hey. Maybe that's, maybe that's my goal. I'll know it's time to leave being board chairman when our meetings start running on a regular basis at two hours and one and a half hours and things like that. Then I'll know my work is done. Wouldn't it be nice to have an uneventful meeting? <laughs> Uncontentious. Un un we're doing great, actually. We're doing very well tonight. Good consensus. I, I totally support, you're right, Amy, to, di to disagree. And I really appreciate that, that you speak that up. Good. Uh, Jenny, are you back? Carl, are you back? I'm here. I'm here. Jenny's here. Carl's here. Great. Let's get. Let's go on audit. 1920 audit. 
Okay, so we don't have the official audits in yet, but the auditors did share with me the fund balance for the general fund. So the projected surplus is $551,212 at Sorry. the end of $551,212 at the That's end of for, fiscal year 20. This is, sorry, and that, this is for us. Yes. Yes, okay, our district, got you. I just, I missed the first part. Yep. Uh, the assigned usage in the current fiscal year was 142,987. So we reduced that from the surplus. It leaves you with an undesignated fund balance of $408,225. So of that, we would be using in the current projections, $173,600 to offset your taxes, which would leave you with a surplus of $234,625. We take out the projected deficit in the current fiscal year of $137,801 per my summary sheet I went over earlier. It would leave you for a surplus to utilize an FY23 of $96,824. So as you can see, we have been utilizing that surplus since the combination came the merger came to to light and each year as we reduce that you have in the each year that we use that you have to then in the next fiscal year try to find those savings in your budget or an additional revenue stream so we've been using over a hundred thousand dollars the last couple of years when we get to fy 23 that's not going to be an option for us if we continue in the way that we're going right now carl does that figure, Tara, does that, is that uh, excluding the money that came into the merger that was the uh, uh, Stockbridge Building Reserve Fund? Does that include any of the money that uh, Rochester realized for the sale of dandelion daycare? Or are those things just been lumped Your in? Your capital we're, we're reserve fund is a special revenue fund that is outside of your general fund, so that is not part of it. The dandelion daycare sale proceeds are part of that surplus. That is part of your general fund. Because I got rolled into the general fund, which not as we meant to. Carl, again? Um, yeah, no, that's then we, I, 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 I echo what I had said in the conversation with Dina at the last meeting, you know, getting an understanding of what those special reserves, reserve funds that we intended to have set up from the sale of the Dandelion Daycare building for, for, uh, the, 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 the Rochester uh, uh, campus and the existing building reserve fund from the Stockbridge campus, you know, getting those legally nailed down and, and, and properly, properly uh, uh, set up would make me feel a lot more comfortable because I this really work. The capital reserve it. fund is already there, Carl. If you want to take the money from the Dandelion daycare sale, you have to put that on your warning and that has to be voted on by the town to create a reserve fund. So your intent to do that and make that, take those proceeds and make a ge general education reserve fund can happen, but it has to be done at the, at your annual meeting by a vote of your which town. Which is the documents I had asked. do it at the board for, level. Which is the, which uh, is the documents I had asked Dina for at our last meeting. I wasn't part of that meeting, so I don't know what you asked for. <laughs> I just tell you what needs to happen and make it happen. Amy? Uh, I do believe that in the um, warning of one of uh, our, it was either, it wouldn't have been to merge, but it was, I believe, our very first, but, uh, first annual meeting, there was um, public vote on reserves being set up for um for specific um campuses and then also we did a, a tuition reserve fund uh that was for all students um so I, I do believe these funds have been created but have not been funded again it would take a vote of your town in your annual warning to take surplus funds and designate them into a special revenue fund you as a board have the authority to do that. 
Right, and that's what the problem was with the uh, dandelion surplus at the initial inception of it. But I do believe that the, the actual fund has been approved by the voters, but the, it just has not been funded. And we would have to take a deficit of whatever, what was it, 60,000 was the dandelion, 75, something like that? And, and then put it in, and then, yeah, so we'd have to budget in the deficit of that amount to put it in there. Right. Um, um, a further so Amy, we'll do some research. If you guys look on your um, your two pager, your uh, projections for revenue and expenditures, we do show your reserve fund balances. So we will search to see what those other funds are that maybe were approved and not funded. So they're at least represented on that document, so you can keep track of them. Oh, and if you look, it does show you the capital project fund which has okay. 109,000, I see in the blue at the bottom of this yep. that Taylor gave us today. Cause that's yep. the only one that's identified right now as a reserve fund with a balance in it at the end of your FY19 audit. Right, okay. Now that reserve fund says that it's a capital project fund. It does not, it does not indicate that it is Stockbridge specific. Is that just you shorthanding it, or is that is that uh, that it's another fund that was improperly set up slash improperly funded? That's the way it's named. So in your articles of agreement in some of the other districts, and without reading yours right now on the spot, any and all assets were transferred to the new district. So that could be the situation here, but I'd need to do some further research on it. Okay. Again, that, that is the stuff that I was asking Dina for at the last meeting in terms of the discussion around uh, um, all the various ins and outs of the merger agreements and the articles of agreement and all that. So getting some clarity on which funds we've actually created, what their purpose and limitations are, and uh, what their balances are, and how we would get the situation to where we wanted it, which was that the Stockbridge funds were, were reserved for the Stockbridge campus and the Rochester funds were reserved for the Rochester campus would be a good piece of guidance. Thank you. So I was able to find the warning. Um, it is for uh, May 22nd, 2018. Article 3, 4, and 5 are um, Article 3 is to create the school district, establish a reserve fund to be funded from time to time of its accumulated fund balance, if any, to be used to fund in whole or in part future capital improvements and maintenance of the district's facility in Stockbridge in such amount that the board of directors determines appropriate same language using rochester the fifth article number five is um to do a um second student secondary educate students secondary tuition expense um fund so they have been approved by the voters um but just maybe not properly funded so for for the next meeting when we do this sheet we will have those added and we will do our research with Dina, Carl, and then you'll see that bottom page updated and we'll work with our auditors as well. Oh, thank you. Does that work? Is that what you're looking for, Carl? It's if my computer would respond. <laughs> I'm trying to put a, put, a, put, a thumb up, put a thumbs up and put my camera on and it doesn't seem to be doing that, but yes, that is what I'm looking for. Thank you. No, thanks, Good. Carl. I didn't realize that's what you had asked her for. So we'll, we'll get that taken. Can I just get to Jenny just because she I had a chance just to see if she has anything to say here. Uh, Jenny, I don't any, I don't have anything in addition. Okay. And Amy, thank you for looking that up and finding it so quickly. Yeah, that's yeah I have all the books really, right, on my right over there. So really yeah. impressive. Really impressive. Thank yeah. you. Um, I would like us to um, possibly talk about uh, if and I guess we need to talk to Tara about the HRA. We are we are contributing to it a hundred percent now and I am wondering if, if at the end of the school year if we're able to take any specifically HRA fund balance and move that create a reserve fund specifically for that um, so that maybe in future years we wouldn't have to fund it at a hundred percent it'd be something I'd like to look into oh great idea you got that, Tara? I will research that for you, Amy, if we can specifically identify an HRA surplus and roll that out. Thank you. Yeah. That's my question. Good. Do we have anything further on um, the 1920 audit? 
Jenny. Oh. oh. I'm Jenny, I'm all good? set, Ethan. Good. I'm all Amy. set. I'm sorry. Is there any way we could have a um, lesson of how to read said audit large book? Do you want me to resend you the PowerPoint that walks you through it? Yeah. You want to sit down and yes. go through it? Please. Thank I you. usually attach the PowerPoint when I send you the audit. Okay. That would be great. That would be a great place to start because I'm sometimes very it's a big document. Yep. And I'm document. happy to sit down and do an, an in depth, like this is what I look at when I look at your audit. Because there is and a lot of information there. I would definitely love to start with that PowerPoint and probably follow up with a, a little class from you. Okay. And, and Tara, I'm going to sound feel like a fool here, but um, have you sent it to us yet, the audit? Or it's not totally finished. No, I don't have the actual audit yet. Okay. They only provided yeah. me with the fund balances. No, I just didn't want to. So feel I could like use it for your budgeting. It was an email that I should have looked at and I have not looked at. Great. That's all I care about. I'm Just so I'm not stupid. That's all fine. No, you're good. Good. Thank you. Um, all right. I think we're ready to move on. But I would say... Um, Justine is the one who brought this experiential outdoor education motion. So I, I think tabling uh, this. Ethan, Ethan, we haven't done 7.4 yet. Shouldn't take long. I just oh, want to. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You're right. I jumped right over it. Funny about that. Okay. Um, Ray, do you have the, the timeline? I think we want to just take a look at this um, that from Lori at the Stockbridge Town Office. Did a really beautiful job of. Um, putting out a timeline for when things are happening. Wow, this is even, this looks fancier than when I saw it, I think. But uh, so petition submission, December 17th, obviously we're past all this, January 21st, a select board meeting, February 4th select board meeting, um, town mail reports, yeah, there it is. Informational school informational meeting, February 23rd, town meeting informational. So we're responsible. So what we discussed, um, Ethan, you want me to jump in? It's getting yep, late. Please. I can. So Ethan and I um, met with a representative of the select board from um, Stockbridge, and Jim. Jim. And uh, I got the name right, right? Jim's yep. great. Yeah, you did. And so we Jim met with Jim. Jim. They will be um, warning this meeting. We will warn it as well, uh, but we will be guests of theirs. And we'll warn it because we will be talking about school district business and uh, assuming that there would be a quorum potentially of our board. And so both boards will warn it. It'll be a joint meeting. They will take the lead on it in regards to facilitation and they will solicit questions. And then we will they will um, facilitate the meeting and then we will address questions and then they would address questions that may be specific to them. And that's what we discussed. Um, it was a approach that we've used recently um, with the Tumber Select Board that went well. Um, and so that's, that's the plan of attack as we move forward to these upcoming meetings here in February. Is that how you remember the, the conversation, Ethan? Yes. Um, what well, just help me because i'm looking at this and getting um is uh so there is only one meeting on the 25th the 23rd is are we doing something on that day for us or are we well, piggybacking it all on the 25th my understanding was that they were still thinking about taking it up specific around this on the 23rd but we'll just need to double check that date with okay them. i can yeah let's check that again um, the other, uh, item so that, so that it's a, it's, it, we'll need to make sure we put that in our calendars, Jenny, Carl, Amy, the 25th, certainly, and possibly the 23rd, um, for, um, uh, present, our presence, obviously be virtual. Um, I believe they use zoom, um, which is so much easier to use. Uh, so that'll be great. But um, as I say, just our, our presence will be needed there. Do we know? Um, what sorry, go ahead, Amy. Do we know what time? Uh, not yet. I would, but we can, Jamie, can we? F yeah, so what I will do is reach back out to them, solidify after our original meeting, mm -hmm. confirm the date and time, and then I will send it out to you. Great. Thank you, Jamie. I just, I at least wanted you to hear this is kind of how this is playing out. Yep. 
Um, and 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 I'll tell you, be honest with you, Amy. This had some um, bearing on um, the date I I picked uh, for because I I wanted to be. I'd love to go to the voters' informational meeting and say, "Boom, we got a we got a confirmation. A lot of details to work out. A lot of things we don't know, but we got a confirmation. If we can get it. If we can't, that's then that's the town's decision. But that's what I'm hoping for." Both um, of those dates, season are listed on the Stockbridge website, yep. a meeting on the 23rd and the 25th at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you for. I love collective intelligence, by the way. It's, just, it's why I've done theater all my life. It's just great. None of us, none of us could be as smart as all of us together. So that's great. Um, uh, uh, good. Uh, the other, Jamie, if I might, uh, I would really like you to address um, the, the, there's been some controversy over the numbers that the school board, that the, I'm sorry, the SU has presented about the potential of unmerged un, uh, uh, budgets. Um, and I just, I think for the public record, we should talk about that. Um, your, your feeling behind that, uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm assuming you're going on your best estimate. Everything's an estimate. Um, there's no so many uncertainties. We broke we broke out the expense expenses by the function codes, and we broke out the expenses around the the SU assessments based on your average daily membership and how we calculate um, assessments via the SU. The formula we use. I will tell you that um, I think that the the biggest area of um, disagreement was we chose and i said at the last meeting i checked the notes and i did and i've said it to the select board we chose not to include the revenue of the small schools grant because it wasn't guaranteed and i have no idea what legislation could be taken up or not taken up this year there's talk around montpelier possibly taking up act 46 disillusion and how that could be could impact the small schools grant and the small schools grant has to be applied for year to year where right now you don't need to do that as a district. And so we chose not to use that as a revenue source. So I think that that is the biggest discrepancy that folks may have or disagreement. Um, there was one other area that we've noticed was miscoded in regards to the school counselor. Um, that was coded to Rochester and not shared appropriately over on the Stockbridge side. And so that would actually increase the expenditures on the Stockbridge side. Tara, did I think I think I captured everything otherwise? Yeah, well, there's a few other questions I haven't had a chance to, to deep dive in and that I just got in the last day or so. Um, but those are the majority of the initial questions we received. And then Charity Colton just sent an annotated um, breakdown to you. And I understand that neither you or Jamie were able to open it. Is that true? I was able to open it, but okay. I have not had time to even yeah. digest what's in there for questions. I, okay. we, I did have a conversation with Charity and I addressed some of her questions. Um, um, but yeah, I have not had time today to go. She just sent it today to go through it. Um, and just for the record, um, Charity Colton had some specific questions about the, the budgeting and the way the budgets came up within this projection and sat down with Tara and Jamie to work through them and appreciated uh, open exchange um, and then came back just today with some more questions. Uh, she was a little concerned not to be going through the board, but I actually think it sound, seems very reasonable to be going to you because this is what you're where the numbers are coming from. It's not coming from from the board. So I, I felt that was very appropriate for you to talk um, directly to her. Amy. So is Charity so, going to is she going sorry. to be able to is Charity going to be able to do some type of presentation since she has such a wealth of knowledge at uh, this school meeting? Is she passing this information along? Don't know. Don't know. Um, I certainly think, um, I, I, I would imagine there's going to be some, um, um, you know, some balanced reply when this information is presented. Um, and, and I think that's certainly welcome. So it gives the, the voters, you know, the, the, the full picture um, they get to choose um, uh, so anyway just you know that that's going on 
Okay. Uh, anything further on our decoupling? Carl or Jenny? Anything? In terms of the, the meeting itself, are we presenting something or what is it just answering questions? So, so Jenny, what worked before is people submitted questions ahead of time to the select board and then the select board presented them to the board and to my office. And then we were able to address each question through a presentation. So I suggested that to the Stockbridge yeah. Select Board. And they, they appreciated that suggestion. That also gives me time to you know run numbers and scenarios and questions and not trying to do it on the fly as we all know that doesn't work very well. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of what you're working with charity right now anyway. It, it, you're, you're getting the questions now and you're working on them and being able to follow up with plenty of lead time, which is exactly what we want. We want, we want people to feel they can trust these numbers or at least trust where they're coming from. Carl, do you have any uh, further comments on this? Uh, no, I, 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 I think we're good. I think that uh, I like the idea of trying to uh, pre-solicit questions so that we can uh, have answers for people. Um, uh, other than that, it sounds like you guys have it all well in hand. Thank you. Good. Okay. Now I'll talk about seven five experience and outdoor education. Um, <laughs> this is the thing I, I was looking most forward to talking about tonight. And of course it's something we're going to pass on just because, um, Justine who brought it, um, is not here. And I think that's fair. I think the other thing I'd like to do, um, I, I really would like the board to come up with a policy about this, but I, and, and Jamie's got some real exciting ideas about how we could be the pilot outdoor education for the SU. And then we try some policy ideas that then possibly become SU wide. Um, I think what we need is some ideas of what a policy would look like and maybe some examples from some other schools, um, some other programs and that we can look at those and take those so that next time we're looking at this, we're not coming in totally cold. I mean, I think we need something more than, yeah, we like this, let's keep going. I think we, it, needs to, it needs to inform our in, in administration how we view outdoor education as an integral part of our school programs so that they know when they say, okay, we're going to allocate this much time per day to this program. It, we have, we're giving them clear guidelines because I just think we've been sort of saying, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. And that's not clear enough as a policy. So um, I'll, I'll do my homework and uh, I think Jamie will do his and we'll come to you next meeting with, a, um, with some uh, possible policy statements that then we can kick around. And hopefully we won't have, you know, the world to decide just our budget, nothing else um, on a night. Uh, uh, is that is that fair enough? Does anybody else, I don't want to supersede the, 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 this area, but um, anybody got anything else? Amy, you fine with that? Good. Uh, Jenny, you good with that? Yeah, I think that sounds good. And it sounds like, um, I don't know if there's anything else to update about the outdoor structures, but it sounds like those oh. are moving forward. Yeah. Um, and sorry me i i i i messed up i i was supposed to i had the building permits and all the information and i just didn't get it done in time for their meeting tonight so i apologize for that um we do need building permits for the right now we have two structures definitely going up one at each campus and a second structure that is fully funded uh through um trustees at stockbridge will be going in there lindy's figuring out where the the location is um, we just figured out the location for the two at Rochester. As I said, one is fully funded. The second one is part of a sort of GoFund type program that Rob Gardner is running um, to fund it. And Jamie, you said something about there being some money about left over to me. And I forgot to write down where you said it was because um, it would be great. I think there's, there, yeah, there, there's potent, potential if we come up a bit short that like have we used um crf monies for you know temporary tents we could potentially oh. use some esser monies for a more you know permanent hold on a sec carl's carl left us so we have no quorum 
just so we know until he comes back on. I hope we didn't lose him for good. Yeah, well, that would shorten our meeting somewhat. And we would be right at three hours. I ah, see. That's it. It's it's fate. It's fate. That is not going to make the public happy. No. Well, you could still entertain public comment. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We can't take action. I think it's okay, not okay. really take action, right? <laughs> I was hoping so. <laughs> or really do any board formal board discussion. But if you just yeah. took comment, that would okay. be fine. We can right. just pass no, no, no response. Just trivial. Trivial comments we can make about things. Anyway, I mean, I think I can finish the conversation about uh, structures. They're very excited. We're very excited to have these structures. They're really interesting. Um, they're they're just strong. Um, I think the kids are going to love them. Um, and uh, um, it's it's a real it's a real positive step forward for this outdoor education program to have dedicated spaces outside. Um, so uh, that's, I'll finish that up and we'll wait for Carl and hopefully it wasn't his. Uh... And in terms of Stockbridge, the Stockbridge PTO is funding the second that's um, yep. structure and we're having an online silent auction in May that we've already started getting some prizes for. Oh, I didn't even see that. Can you please send me a link or send us a link for this? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh, well, that may be. And thank you to Lindy and I see Janet Whitaker's on the call who are helping with field prizes as they come in for us. Uh, are, they, are, they, are you still, Janet, Lindy, are you still looking for more prizes? Are you? Jenny is the prize coordinator. Uh, oh, you are. We just ho we just house it all, and it gets dropped off to Miss Jan. Oh, Jenny, I was going to yeah. say, I bet I could, I bet I could get my brother to throw some meat at. at that uh, would be at great. Jenny. Yeah, we're yeah. getting a bunch of gift certificates, and um, we've got two airline tickets from Cape Air. Um, oh, great. Getting something. Oh from gosh, the when we can use that, Cape Air. Oh. Bunch of stuff. Count me in. Oh, yeah, we man. Can get out of town at some point. Board retreat. Board retreat. Board and administration. Su administration retreat. Uh, Carl, I, I'm worried, Ethan, that Carl maybe did yeah. lose. Yeah, I think he. It, that looked very clean and and solid. Um, so I'm thinking think, that my recommendation would be that the board entertains public comment. Yep, I think we do public comment. Uh, let's. Let's work our way down here as my usual list. Uh, we have an unverified caller. I don't know if we know what that is, Ray, but I'll go down to uh, Janet. Janet, do you have any Whitaker from Stockbridge? Do you have any comment to the board? No, no, I have no comment. I'm good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Joanne Mills, do you have any comment for the board? Hopefully, you'll be able to connect. Oh, dear. I'm good. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Yep. Uh, Michaela Richardson, do you have any comment for the board? Uh, no, no comment. Thanks. Michaela, just a question. Are you Stockbridge yeah. or Rochester? Rochester. Rochester. Thank you. Thank you for participating. I've seen you the last couple of times. Uh, Tim Pratt. Do you have any comment for the board? Nope, I think Tim left. Yep, okay. Uh, then I'm gonna go to our two phone numbers, 802 uh, finishing in 38, um, star six to unmute. Please identify yourself. Hi, Ethan. It's Keith over at Stockbridge. Hi, Keith. Um, the only comment I want to make is that I believe the board made reference to the uh, merger documentation where it said the um, FY22 number was going to be $1.90. I believe that was also pre-CLA, so that number would come down and, and get closer to where you guys are going to be. Um, 
you know, where, where the actual taxes are going to be. And that also made an assumption that it was just, uh, you know, like a, a dartboard assumption that those rates were increased at a rate of 5% flat uh, per annum, uh, which was really just, you know, an assumption that was made. So I'm not sure, you know, to say that, oh, the rate would be $1.90, um, you know, that's what was projected. Um, I think that's not 100% accurate. Uh, that's my only comment. Great. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate it. Um, 802 star star 97. Please unmute star six to unmute and um, uh, identify yourself, please. It's Charity Colton. Can you hear me? Hi, Charity. Yes. Hi. Um, so I just have a couple comments. First, I wanted to clarify the comments about me having conversations with Tara and Jamie. Yes, I have been having conversations with them. And just so everyone is clear, while some of our conversation is in regards to specific budget lines or questions I had for them on it, a lot of what I have been discussing with them is that in my 25 years of working in big business where I managed $12 million a month budget um, internationally, I had a very different approach than some of what is being utilized by our district. And so I had some questions for them that are very out of context compared to what they're used to working with. So it, I don't want anyone to be, you know, misunderstanding what my, my conversation with them, I am not working or consulting with them on how to build the budget for our district. I'm just offering an, a, di a different approach, um, a different set of insight based on what I've done in the past. Um, so I don't want anyone thinking that I'm, you know, getting into something that should be between them and the board. Um, the situation with me feeling like I'm going behind the board's back, it, that's just my ethical approach because I did come from a very different background of accounting. Um, and in my previous experience, I would be fired for doing what I did by talking with Jamie and Tara outside of the board, knowing exactly what my conversation was going to be with them. So again, that's because of my previous experience with big international business. Um, my only other comment, and I've made this one before, but a long time ago is, I know there's been conversation and it was brought up that there's, you know, 7.5 on the budget or on the uh, agenda about experiential outdoor learning. My only concern is, is there an issue if we were to entertain that type of a platform that it is a change outside of the standard public education platform and if you go too drastically outside of that platform, you're not providing the traditional standard public education, and you're also not offering choice to those people that want a standard public education. We are, like I living in Stockbridge, I wouldn't have the choice to go somewhere else that offered a standard because I live here in Stockbridge. I don't know what the legality or if there is a legality of that, but I think it's something that if there really is the seriousness to entertain this type of platform, what is that an issue and how do we work around it? That's it. That's a great point. Um, thank you. That's definitely something we should take into consideration for our policy discussion. Very good. All right. Um, Tim said his battery died. So I guess he's, he's out. He sent me an email. Um, that is our public comment for tonight. And without Carl, um, uh, I think that's about all we can do tonight. That's, that's about it. Yes. Um, so I don't even know that we can adjourn formally. Um, but uh, um, we'll do that and somebody can call us out if we're doing it. Yeah, you, you could still move. Uh, 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 I'll entertain a motion to adjourn from one of my board members, Amy. I I, I had a quick question. Do we need to meet, make a special meeting to meet uh, for this second executive session, or is it? Uh, can it wait? What do you think? Uh, Just wondering if I need to be scheduling another. I, th another I think meeting. it. I think it can wait. I also think if we have a special budget meeting, like we've talked about, um, that that could also. Yeah, I'll reach out to the board. I'm probably going to look 
and I don't want to do, you know, we can, we can talk about the, the scheduling of a meeting um, via email. That's permissible with open meeting laws. Okay. Let's I'll do probably that. look to lock you guys in the week of the 15th to put the budget to bed. Okay. Um, and we can take this up. All right. Thank you. Is there, Thank you, Amy. Is there a conflict with people's town meetings? Because that would be our March meeting. Just for thinking in March. What are you talking about? Like talking about the February 15th? No, I'm talking about our normal March meeting as well. Oh, yeah, oh. that's true. That's true. That it is the night. It's the night of. Um, I, but I know everything's different because of COVID. I didn't mean to complicate. I just know that that's town meeting day. So I'm not sure what that means for. I mean, different. it won't matter to me because Rochester's the night before. Well, actually, no, we'll probably might even know some results. So I'm sort of eager to meet that night, actually, if it can happen. What's the stock? Is the Stockbridge um, having a town meeting on Tuesday evening at the second? Mon of Tuesday day, I believe, right? right? I would really rather do this via email to set up a meeting yeah. just to stay with open meeting laws because you're doing board business right yeah, now. We are. Okay, good. Oh. We'll figure it out. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Jenny. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank everyone. You. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. you.